trying to sail from Charleston, South Carolina to Puerto Rico for a boat delivery. That didn't work out very well. We had an engine fire, broken boom. We had no wind for the one sail we had left. We ended up calling the Coast Guard and getting towed into the Bahamas. Wyland said the ocean stirs the heart, inspires the imagination, and brings eternal joy to the soul. Let's investigate that. Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Jane from Sailing Trinity. Welcome to a special five-part series that is serving as an intermission to our Around the Islands in 80 Days voyage. Unlike our usual stories of Greek mythology, in this series we dive instead into the modern tales of present-day sailors. We will explore their most memorable moments at sea, be it for better or for worse, the valuable lessons they've learned as a result of this lifestyle, and their personal personal advice on living freely and fully. As I venture off on my personal travels this summer, I invite you to join us here every fortnight to dive deeper into a different colorful chapter of these extraordinary lives. Take a second now to subscribe and like the video before we jump in. Once again, I'm Taylor Jane and these are your storytellers for today. I think it'll be Interesting. I mean, just let her do what she does. You should have seen this an hour before your life. <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> I'm Claudine. We live, or our official legal address is in the United States on South Carolina in Hilton Head, but we now live on this boat full time. And uh, I'm Donovan. I'm her husband. Um, we've been selling for three years. We started on a Catalina 22 in 1981 and learned how to sail and now we're on a 44 foot uh, catamaran, a Fountain Peugeot Helia 44. Where we're from. I was born and raised in Mexico City. When I was a teen we moved to the United States. I uh, lived in several states around the whole country and after um, in my early 20s I lived in France and Paris for two years. Then went back to the States and moved around several states again. I am originally from Louisiana, um, born and raised, and moved to South Carolina in 2017. And uh, when, when we sold our house and everything, that's where we left. Yeah. For myself, there wasn't a sudden realization. I've traveled my entire life since I was a small child by myself. My parents just threw me on an airplane and sent me to my grandmother. Um, so I've always enjoyed moving around. I haven't lived in the same place for longer. I think the longest has been eight years in any one place. Um, so moving around you know, just what I do. The realization as far as wanting to jump into the sailing, I think both of us have parents who unfortunately passed away or had an illness or something at a pretty young age and so that already started us thinking about uh, the important things in life and what was important to us and what wasn't did we need the three-car garage and the nice cars and the big houses and all the things that come with all of that neither one of us really were interested in that we wanted to pare down everything decided at one point you know material things were important but they weren't any longer in that time of our life and when COVID hit I think that sped up the process because we initially were just going to save up money and still retire at your normal 62 years or whatever retirement age although he shakes his head because he always said 55 55 contacted Edward Jones our financial, financial advisor company yeah. and basically just said okay let's make a plan because we want to retire earlier than we initially thought mm -hmm and get moving on this next phase of our life. So that was about it. Uh, we were going to retire in Mexico and we were wanting to become scuba instructors. And when we went scuba diving down there right where I got certified from open waters, the guy when we got up that day and we're sitting there in the boat like this, he goes, how do you like my office? I'm like, he loved love saying it. that. He loved Our scuba instructor would always it. do that. Th that was every day. This is my office. So. I, and he's going to be watching this. Yeah, the, I'm going <laughs> to one-up him and say, how do you like my home? <laughs> <laughs> that 
was your office. This is our home. Yeah. So we get to wake up to it every day. So. Yeah. It's yeah. a dream. It is a dream. Our boat is named Eucalyptus. Um, when we purchased the boat in 2022 mm -hmm. from a couple from Australia, um, it was called Eucalyptus. So we were in Turkey at the time where we bought it and we wanted to call it something Turkish. So we just named it Eucalyptus, which is Turkish for Eucalyptus. It's a 2019 uh, Fountain Peugeot Hilia uh, 44. It's an owner's version. 13.3 meters. 13.3 meters, yes. We wanted to find this type of boat. We looked at Lagoons, uh, the 42s, but when we saw this one for the first time, we just fell in love. Um, it just seems like the quality is better made. Scratch that up. No. <laughs> we just like the Fountain Visual better. Because then like all the Lagoon owners are going to get on us. We you just, can leave it in there. Yeah, Let them <laughs> come to our YouTube yeah. channel and leave us a comment yeah. why your Lagoon is better than the Fountain Visual. <laughs> um, we wanted. A, a fountain budget from the get-go so, it, so did, that's why it took so long but in the states so much it costs it's a hundred thousand more so my wife put some feelers out in facebook uh the fountain fountain peugeot helia owners group well we couldn't join because you have to own the boat exclusive yeah, yeah. The, a couple that philippe were, yeah philippe who, yeah. who runs I, the helia group was kind enough to post my my things and for me we received an email from a, the couple that we bought the boat from it actually Everything paid off. was perfect meant to be um but the price <laughs> Was not yeah, it was over our budget. It was over our Shelter. budget. So she sent an email back to us in July saying, I see that you haven't purchased a boat. Are which, you still interested? Are you still interested? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're still interested, mm -hmm. but not at that price. Well, they came down, so mm -hmm. yeah. We went over our budget. We went over our but budget. But it was well worth it. For when, a 2019 yeah. instead of a 2015 for the same price. When we were in the States, when we were looking for boats in the States, they were what we were finding in the Caribbean and it was just they were either demasted and hurricane damage or they yeah. ended up being charter boats they had four cabins you name it so the fact that this boat came along when it did it was just a dream come you know decided to, to go over our budget and just be a little bit more careful with our finances <laughs> <laughs> he laughs because we're doing some work now that's bring out another thousand exactly but, but stands for bring out another yeah. thousand I can talk about secret features because then everybody will know about it and they won't be secret anymore. But one thing that I really like about this boat is that it has just, just the right amount of storage and the way that it's set up with the storage, the location of the storage, for our lives to function without having excess. So I was a little bit of a pack rat at home um when our parents passed i wanted to keep everything as a memento as a as a memory so i had my mom's record collection and and cassette cassettes and i mean just books oh my god books that i've moved around the country for the last 50 years of my life so everything that we need on our day-to-day -day life can be found in one you know it's specific spot in this boat and it's i mean it's a mental thing it's just releasing all of that, leaving everything behind that we had on land, be it subscription services and mortgages and insurance payments and um, I, I, they're not material things, but it's just leaving all that behind and just having this is our home, like this little rectangle is our home and that's all we need to be concerned about yeah. instead of worrying about other stresses. And when you declutter your physical world, your mental yeah. world declutters as well. Exactly. And any baggage that you have attached to physical items, that can go away mm -hmm. as well. Like there's a lot of psychology behind actually mm -hmm. the connections that you have to things that you own. It exactly, makes weather. space for yeah, yeah. boat work and exactly. the, yeah. the weather and all those things. Yeah. yeah. There's just enough room for a specific amount of shoes and for a specific amount of clothing. And back home, I had my closet. We had a big walk-in closet, and I had you know you size 8, size 6, size 10, size 12, so for like <laughs> however I wanted to eat or not work out or whatever, my 10 different sizes of the ocean. You know, I kept everything. Mm -hmm. Now it's just, you know. Well, it, it, you do wear the same clothes over and over. Not you, but yeah. as a person. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think YouTube 
viewers notice that when yeah. you watch sailing channels that a lot sure. of the everybody wears the same clothes because you don't have closet space to keep mm -hmm. anything i've made a lot of changes up yeah. here <laughs> yeah we have um if i had anything to say that it's a hidden gem i think it's our dinghy it's an oc tender um i do like that because it has a fiberglass bottom you have it's supposedly not able to tilt or I guess the fall word. over yeah but no. we know that's not true right from um, stories we've heard from stories we've heard but yes well you you're not gonna stand on it yeah for the hard bottom nice though right yes hard it's got a nice good. hard bottom it has wheels so you can pull it up on the beach which mm -hmm. we've used that before you can go in uh, caves with it it's just a very there's no fear of puncturing no. it if you go into any shallow places that no. have pointy rocks or anything yeah you can it's, get anywhere with it and it's sleek and it's sporty and it's yeah. got the same color and donovan's been obsessed with oc tenders for about three or four years now yeah he looked at them and drooled and said when we buy a boat whatever it comes with we're getting an oc tender and when, when the Australian couple yes. sent us the private message that they were selling yeah. this boat, they sent us some pictures, and when he saw the OC tender, he lost his mind. Yeah. Meant to be. It, was. <laughs> and, it definitely yeah. was. But, yeah, no, he's, was, he's a happy boy. I was happy. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So, we started off sailing in the States. Our little Catalina and we did a stint uh, trying to sail from Charleston South Carolina to Puerto Rico for a boat delivery for a monohull a Benito and that didn't work out very well we had an engine fire we had a broken boom we had no wind for the one sail we had left we had it was a complete mess um, we ended up calling the Coast Guard and getting towed into the Bahamas. We still bought a boat. And we still bought a boat. We were still, that was right in the process when we were looking for our boat, for, for this boat. And then uh, we bought this boat. We sailed up and down the coast of, in Turkey, the west, southwest coast, uh, up to Ivalik, and then crossed over into Greece. In Greece, we sailed through the Sporades, the Cyclades, Athens area. Uh, went through the Corinth Canal, uh, sailed a little bit of the Ionian so far. So we still have a long way to go, but so two countries in Europe so, so far. far. It's tested us many times. I think it's, you know, you're, you get a boat, you, you think that you're going to go lay out, you're going to be out in the sun, you don't have to worry about the toilets backing up. You don't have to worry about changing the oil in the engines or you got you're, water coming in. You're not in. thinking that. Huh? You're not thinking that. Yeah. yeah. You, you think it's just like a weekend retreat, but it's not. When you live on it, you have so much work. There's a lot of work. Um, and it's all work that you're not familiar with for true. us, at least in our situation. No. I mean, I can watch YouTube videos on it and learn how to change the oil or work on a water maker or something like that, but there's a lot of stuff that's uh it's a huge learning curve huge learning curve weather you're always looking at weather what, what which way is the wind blowing so we can go there or if we can't we have to wait or we have to motor you can't it's hard to make plans with anybody like if somebody's going to be visiting or something like that yeah your you, life really revolves around the weather yeah. as to when and where you're going to pick people up or yeah. when you're going to see them if you're right. traveling out of your own country, you're having to deal with the bureaucracy of the different gov foreign governments to remain legally in, in each country, and that's whew, that's a lot more. I don't know why that surprised me, because I've been trying to renew my French passport for a while, and that was a nightmare. So you just have to have a lot of patience, a lot of patience. Communicating with people that are not from your country or that don't speak a language that we speak a lot of google translate yeah uh, in turkey it was i mean that's the first thing you would even the people that you asked the question would bring out in google translate yeah not as bad in greece though you're tested daily yeah. <laughs> yeah. living the lifestyle but it's worth it interesting that's 
one word. I was shortening it. <laughs> <laughs> a man of very few words. Exactly. Um, it's the most uh, amazing, exhilarating, oh. and terrifying Tell. Tell. Uh, life we could have asked for, and we wouldn't change a thing. Nope. Wouldn't change a thing. Period. So, anytime that we sail, there's something crazy. I don't know that it's necessarily funny until maybe a year later, <laughs> but it, it, it doesn't matter what we do, there's always just some craziness. Uh, for me, personally, the amount of times I've almost crashed us into rock cliffs because, welcome to our life, this is our dog Zoe, our blind nine-year-old multi-shit. I forget to center our steering wheel quite often, and so when I'm working the throttles, the boat is not acting or reacting to how I'm telling it to react because the steering wheel is like this, and so our rudder's facing the wrong way. And so there's rock cliffs right in front of us quite often. There's been quite a few moments that are now funny, and moments when we just forget silly little things and have to invite our friends to dinghy over mid-sail uh, we have to radio on VHF uh, our friends to come save us. We couldn't get the Jenniker down because it's a continuous furler that you pull it one way and it releases it. And well, I had a knot at the other end, so it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. So I didn't know that. And he comes up there and he goes, Ah, you got a knot. Yeah. yeah anyway, we, he got in his dinghy, left his wife alone in their boat. They have the same exact identical helia yeah. that we do, and left his wife alone going five knots and uh, came back like two nautical miles to fetch us and got on the boat, figured it out in two seconds. He was like, oh, you have a knot here. That was my Australian accent. You have a knot here, I can do it for mate. you. Oh, you have a knot here. Yeah. You have a knot here, there mate. <laughs> and then got back in his dinghy and went back to his own boat. So yeah, if, we, if, if her episode's gonna be six hours yeah. long, I mean, we could tell you about a million other. Yeah, that happened <laughs> twice. A yeah. separate series. Yeah, yeah, when the throttle just came out in my hand and I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, and the boat's going <laughs> We'll just stop there for now. <laughs> That we can scream and yell at each other at the top of our lungs and then just blame it on boat life. Blame it on the anchor, blame it on... So we can cuss all we want at each other yeah. at that time, but once we get finished, we can hug each other and... Hug it out. Hug it out. I've seen those t-shirts that say, I apologize for what I said while anchoring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's us. That's the truth. First, we wanted to sail around the world hurriedly, in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, but now there's a lot of pressure. There was that. a lot of pressure with that, yeah, because we're from the states. We bought the boat in Turkey. Everybody's like, when you when you coming back to the states? We're like, mm, maybe a year in Turkey or two, and then sail across. But now we're like, mm. you realize that it's going to take a lot longer than two years to get through the Mediterranean to visit all the places that we want to see. So there was a lot of pressure when we were planning everything. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure and pre-planning all of that and, and not knowing really what the lifestyle was going to be like. And now we are taking it one day at a time and figuring out, you know, we could be here for two years. We could be here for five years. Who knows? A lot to just, see. There's not as much pressure and there's a lot less stress just doing it organically, like yeah. you said. Yeah. yeah. The 6,000 islands in Greece. Mm -hmm. How do you expect yourself to rush through? And this is for you. Mm -hmm. This is a part of your life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so I would definitely examine uh, your current life situation, um, who all is involved, if there's a spouse or a partner, children. But also those around you, your family uh, um, and or friends that live near you that you would typically visit. Um, this lifestyle is not conducive to being able to just get on an airplane and go back home if there's a marriage or a funeral or, you know, anything. Um, you have to find a place to 
to leave your boat. It can be really, really expensive. So you need to look at your life and those that surround you that you love and have those conversations with them to make sure that they understand and that they're okay with it. So in our situation, we have his uncle who passed away uh, last a few months ago, and we had that conversation with him. You know, this is our plan. This is what we'd like to do. We knew that his health was not great. Mm -hmm. um, so you make a lot of sacrifices and you, you have to make some decisions that sometimes are not easy at all. So that would be the, the biggest thing as far as the people that you're going to be traveling with or the person, partner, what have you, what kind of personalities do you have? Um, are you adventurous? Um, are you wanting the same things? Um, because you don't want one settling and saying, I'll just go because you want to go. And you know, it's, it's, it's a complete lifestyle change that affects everything in your life so you have to make sure that both partners are are in on it 100 percent if there's any kind of doubts or hesitations just don't make long-term plans don't sell your house don't sell all of your belongings um, and your car get a storage unit rent out a place your place um, um, and just do like a short-term thing to see how you know don't don't jump in like that Probably the most important thing is financial. Um, talk to a professional, uh, to a professional finance analyst. Now, whatever financial planning you have, whatever amount of money you plan to live on, to save what you're gonna pay for the boat, um, whatever that final amount is, double it, if not triple it, before <laughs> you jump in to this kind of lifestyle so that you don't have the worry in the back of your mind about what what could potentially happen if things go south. So I those agree. are, I think, the most important things. Yeah. Beautiful. I would love to share our social media and YouTube with your viewers and invite them to come chez nous. Uh, to look at uh, either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, under Sailing Eucalyptus. If you don't know how to spell that, you can look right here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and, you get me. <laughs> uh, our YouTube is also um, Sailing Eucalyptus, and we would love to invite you over well folks that's it for today's stories don't forget to head over to our channel to catch up on our 80 day voyage around the greek islands while you're here we're grateful that you took the chance to escape the ordinary with us today see you in another video bye